Okay guys, so in this video we're going to talk about SLOs. So what we're going to cover is what is an SLO and we're going to talk about why do we care about them and then we're going to show a few examples of how to start using them in pretty much any size of product I would say. At the very least it's a good way to get started I've found to use this approach. So first things first, a SLO or SLO stands for service level objective and the idea is very simple it's just a metric that you care about as a company or as a team. Now if we're going to keep it at the team level to start off with if your team is responsible for maintaining a system there are certain things that you might care about such as you might want to know what the latency of your requests are you might also want to know what the error rates are, CPU usage, memory usage, and disk usage. These are the sorts of numbers you want in order to verify whether or not the system is healthy. And the idea behind an SLO is just that, that you create some type of metric that you care about, that you want to track to make sure that you are succeeding. But an SLO can be more than that. It doesn't have to just be something related to technical matters. It can be something that is related to business matters, such as, for example, let's say that you want to create a really smooth flow for the user. Well, then you can track how long it takes the user to go from point A to point B and then have that as an SLO. And the foundational foundation behind this idea is that once you start tracking this, you can decide that on an arbitrary number which you want to keep. And if for some reason you actually fall below that number, that should testify to you that, well, you're doing something wrong or something isn't right. In, technical, in the technical environment, you might have to react on it immediately because the service might be down. But in a more business-oriented SLO, you might have to evaluate if it's time to try to improve your flow or the user experience in some fashion. Now each SLO is usually made up of one or several SLIs and SLI just stands for service level indicator and you can think about an SLI as just one metric that is needed in order to calculate the SLO. As an example, if you want to know how many errors you have on different requests within the system, you would have to track two different SLIs. You would have to know the total amount of requests you take in, and you would have to know the amount of requests that are actually successful in order to get the rate of errors that you have, or the rate of success, depending on how you want to measure it. So let's just dive into my simple little application that I've created here. So I'm running a small little express server and it basically looks, this is my entire application. So there's a login page where we can say foo and we can say bar and we can log in and then we can say something something and then we can fill out a number and all we're going to see is a list of records that I've persisted to a MongoDB database. So this is my entire application for now. And the idea here is that there are certain key factors that I care about to get it with my team when I'm maintaining the system. So let's have a look at the actual things that I care about. So if we go over to my code here again, you'll notice here that I have this metric service directory. And within the metric service directory, I have a folder called SLO. And so what I'm suggesting that you try out with your with your team. I suggest that you should probably if you're working on like a really really small product unless you really want to push it to the limit, you don't have to go this far, but this is a very useful thing when you're in a an IT company environment where you're trying to motivate different changes or different improvements to your stakeholders. Because if you're tracking data and you're measuring things, you can actually motivate a lot of the suggestions that you have in a better way. So the first thing to consider here is to make sure that you version control the SLO itself so that the, uh, so that the concept exists in a version controlled format. It's not a good idea to just write this down on like a Google Doc or something like that. Keep this as co close as possible to the code. So here you'll see the SLOs that I care about. So I have one SLO here for creating products. And then I include a readme file in the SLO where I declare. And this is the first step. So you and your teammates or, and your stakeholders, you sit down and you just declare 
what you care about. So in this scenario, we have decided that me and my team that it should be easy to create a product. Okay, and then I list, and then we list out the various SLIs that we will need. This, in this case, we only have one SLI, but we could have, you know, twenty if we wanted to. It's just a way for me, you know, for us to to state what factors in in order for us to produce an accurate number or a number that represents our success factor. And then finally we decide on the most important thing and that is the budget. So in other words we create a budget for where we say that alright we want this number that's uh, the, this SLO to be at a certain level at all times and if we're not at that level then we should evaluate if there is something going on or if we need to act on it or if we need to create some stories in order to iterate and can maybe improve this. So in this scenario it's the create product SLO that we care about and all we're saying here is that it should take less than 20 seconds to create a product and then we simply need to track that and what the reason one of the things I really like about having this approach and just creating a directory where you store the declaration of what the SLO is about is that you can actually include all of the metrics gathering code that you need in order to do this now I'm using Prometheus and Grafana to do this I'll show you just one sec so I have this little helper function that all it really it really only it depends on the Prometheus client and then it just declares a counter and in this case it declares a histogram where I can just store the fact that this happened and I want to keep this as closely associated as possible to the SLO that I actually care about so that's why I create a little histogram here where we just measure in three different buckets it should probably be more than that but I hope you get the general idea and then I expose this SLO together with other SLOs. I have several here which have different readme files and in some cases they don't actually require me to create a, a histogram or a counter or something like that because I have, a, another, like I have another method of gathering it such as a middleware. We we're going we're gonna to look at that in just a moment but hopefully this makes sense. And here is like the login SLO and then you'll notice that I have this little dashboard.json thing which is another thing that is really nice if because if you're using something like Grafana you can actually export the different dashboards and settings that you have created in order to visually represent the SLO and how things are going and I think that's a that's a very important thing to do that's why you want to version control your SLOs because these things change over time and mistakes do happen so you might lose your settings or something like that and that's not something you want you want this to be version controlled and here I've created a few counters just for the amount of t attempts of logins and the amount of successes and finally I have this tiny little one that is called registration emails where I'm basically just stating that hey we, there's a number of a registration attempts and I ex we want this to be a successful experience so we create a counter that actually stores the fact that the registration email was delivered so here we have a few a few different variations we have something that is tied into performance like latency and errors and then we have a few things that are tied into user experience and on the server we're pretty much just like this is a very simple express server that kind of just illustrate this in a demo environment but all we really do here is that we register our Prometheus client because Prometheus is basically just the database that where we store all the events that take place all the metrics and then in order to deal with the error rate and the latent well the latency at the very least we have this prom bundle middleware it's just an arbitrary middleware I found to help me track the latency every language does this differently but I just use this one because it was quick and easy to kind of illustrate the point. Fo don't focus so much on the approach of tracking these metrics, focus more on the idea behind the SLO. And then here in my create products endpoint we pretty much just extract out the name, the price and the time. Now this is an example of where we have an SLO which requires a bit of custom code in order to be able to track that metric. How do you figure out how long something takes for the user? Well, if you're going to own that data, one of at least I've found the simplest way of doing that is to actually include it in the form itself. So if we have a look here at my TypeScript file here, you'll notice here that I'm just creating a form and then I create a hidden field 
with the name time that just takes a snapshot and like creates a snapshot uh, string of the current time and sends that to the uh, to the server and by doing that i can actually know what how long it took from the point of that the user saw the page to the to the submission of the page i can figure out how long did that did, did this actually take and then we have like just getting the products i've created a mock error endpoint here just so that i can simulate some errors to just create some fake data if i wanted to show since we have some dashboards we're going to look at in just a moment and then here is my login flow, which is fairly simple. You can only log in as four and with the password bar. And if you're not that person, you're going to invalid. We are going to throw an invalid login error, which is just a custom error that I created in order to uh, simulate different types of errors. And if we pass, we're going to call the metric service, which with the login succe succeeded. Uh, function so that's something that you should consider as well if you're going to work in this fashion create a directory with the different SLOs and then just create an interface service or something like that that abstracts away all the underlying code because you might have several different counters and so forth and in the future you might want to change from using Prometheus to using some other service that stores metrics because the thing is I'm using Prometheus and Grafana that's not right for everybody it's just simple for uh, in my opinion to set this up and kind of maintain it yourself but there are services that you could buy into instead so by just creating this middle layer which is just this wrapper around all of these different counters you can kind of abstract away that fact from the rest of the code so this brings us to this metrics endpoint. This is specific to uh, to Prometheus, where this is where we're gathering. Prometheus is basically just polling this endpoint and gathering up the metrics. And what's going to happen then is this. So we're going to have this. This is this is Grafana, which is just a visualization tool. It's just going to help me visualize the data that I'm putting into Prometheus. It's a, it's an open source project, uh, as far as I know and completely free of charge if you want to use the community edition. I'm not sure if they have a paid version, ah, doesn't really matter. And here we're simply gathering up all of our different metrics and here you can see for example that if I go and edit here I simply construct a few queries to the Prometheus server and then I configure my Prometheus server or my uh, Grafana server to actually gather the uh, the data from Prometheus. So here's my default data source which is just connecting to my local instance of course for now and so what's happening is basically that Prometheus is just gathering up all the data that uh, I want from, no, from sorry Grafana is p pulling in the data from Prometheus and showing them on my different dashboards. So the at least the way that I like to do this is that I like to have two sets of uh, dashboards. I have one big dashboard for well pretty much all of the SLOs. So each SLO is represented with one like overview, which is this dashboard here, so that my team and my stakeholders can all kind of see that all right, this is how we're doing, these are the things that we care about, these are the things that we are measuring, so at the, to give them kind of an eagle eyes view of how the system is doing. This is very useful, especially when you have multiple teams who are dealing with things, because if each team is, pro is showcasing what they care about within the system, if you create one dashboard that kind of each team, with each team's SLOs, what happens is that you can very quickly get like a, an overview of how the whole system is doing and this is perfect when you want to release high risk features or stuff like that that you don't really know how it's going to play out if you release something and each of the team is taking responsibility each of the teams are taking responsibility to actually show, show visualize the data and measure things well if something goes wrong with any of these dashboards you will know about it this is a very good way of making sure that you understand the impact of changes within the system and then you might have uh, and then I have a second layer of dashboards, which is at the SLI level. So there's two levels. Top level is at the SLO level. That dashboard is just showcasing the SLOs. And then the level underneath is each SLI that we're tracking individually. And this is usually just dashboards that the team cares about. It's not so important that the company knows about all of this stuff because this is more, it's lower level. 
and more specific to what the team needs to know. So by tracking these sorts of things, you can actually get a really good understanding of how you're doing with different features and technical matters. And I mean, there's really no limit to how, it, it all comes down to how good you are at figuring out how to get, gather that data. An example I can give you where it's not so straightforward to, figure, to get the data, but it's very valuable to solve this in a, let's call it a semi-custom way, is for example, emails is a big thing. I'm just gonna take an example from my own work. Emails is a big t thing for my team where we send out different emails and we want to understand whether or not the user has actually opened the email and we want to understand what type of email it was, what user there did it and things related to it so we can figure out how our external communication is actually working. It's a, that's a semi-tricky thing. So one of the approaches that we've used that works really well is to do something like this. We create a like let's just pretend for the moment that this is an email. Well, we create an email and in this email it looks like this is just the H1 a header and it's sort of right, but there's also this little image underneath, which is this tiny little one by one image that uh, you can practically not see it. It's like this one pixel image. Now the reason why we're doing this is because emails is one of those things that is notoriously hard to deal with because each email client is different. So, and you can't include JavaScript, so you can't just connect to the server. But what you can do is that you can create this fake little image or this tiny little image that is completely invisible to the user when they're opening the email and then you can simply latch on whatever information that you want and then you can check if like, whatever it is that you want in the query that you send and in this case we just want to make sure that the registration email was delivered and if this if the image is fetched uh, uh, successfully the you we're going to log that fact and even if it's not that uh, registration email we're just going to send back the image and this is a it's been working fairly well it's a fairly simple trick to measure things like that so what i want you to take away from this is that SLOs is a really great thing to invest in once you have a bit of maturity in your team it's not something you should start off with like on day one it, but once you have a team that kind of works well together and you have multiple stakeholders and you want to figure out how you can continuously improve your product and how well you're actually doing, it's highly valuable to invest in this. And I also highly suggest that you try to create a like your own metric gathering system because some of the off-the-shelf solutions, they are good, but ideally you want to have the all the data with all the information aggregated in one place and ideally in a format that you can control. So me personally, I think Grafana and Prometheus is a way, really nice way of doing that even though I need to maintain it myself. If you have other, other systems, that because there are other solutions to this, use them. Just make sure that you keep things as simple as possible and that you're always in control of the data so that you don't get into a situation where you can't track something that you want to be able to track. I've personally found that by doing things myself with my team and just investing a little bit of time into solutions like having an image or something like that, we can track everything we want and there's really no limitations. But there are of course alternatives. Hopefully you found this useful. Have a great day.